Good afternoon, guys. Anthony Peluso here, founder of Wealth for Life and Australian property expert. Good to uh, be talking to you again. Um, today's topic for discussion, when things go wrong with your property investments, okay? So um, if you've been in the game long enough um, and depending on how you got started or what you've been doing, chances are quite high when you're investing that things tend to go a little off the track, okay? So I'm going to talk about my experience when things have gone wrong for me. My first, very, very first investment property. I bought, I lost $69,000, okay? Imagine imagine, uh, imagine doing something like that when you don't even really have $69,000 to lose. I bought an unrenovated property in one of the western suburbs here in Melbourne, and lo and behold, um, didn't really understand the cost of renovating such an unrenovated property. Some electrical work, some replumbing, um, some uh, rewiring, some re-engineering, and uh, couldn't make the money that we needed to make to to get out of it with a profit. So, um, long story short, um, big lesson I learnt. Okay, big lesson I learnt: don't let your ego uh, take charge when you're getting into investments. Okay, um, so. The thing with with investments, and we'll talk about property investments here, is this, that um, the number one thing you must have is is a goal, okay? You need to understand the big picture. And I keep talking about this because it's the big picture, it's the goal, right? The, the, The overall goal that you're looking to achieve, right? That pushes you through when things get tough, okay? If you don't have a goal that's big enough, or bigger than the things that you, the obstacles and and barriers that you're going to face along the way, you'll collapse, you'll quit, you'll give up. So make sure that goal is scary. Make sure it has a lot of zeros on it. Make sure that it keeps you up at night. Okay, it needs to be a goal that that really inspires you. Okay, that moves you, that is quite challenging. Okay, and it needs to be huge because if it's not. The slightest discomfort, the slightest barrier that you run into or obstacle that you run into, you will want to quit, okay? And that's a sure sign that your barriers and your obstacles that you run into are actually bigger than your goal, okay? So if your goal is big enough, those barriers will look like little ants or little flies, okay? You'll just squash them, walk over them, ignore them. You won't even see them, okay? So... um, That's the first thing you need to make sure you understand and you've got in place, okay? So with that in place, what do we do? $300,000 in 14 months. $200,000 passive income for the rest of your life when you stop working. $200,000 in capital growth over a two-year period. These are some of the results that our clients have achieved over the last 12 months. My name is Anthony Peluso, CEO and founder of Wealth for Life. We're going to be running some special events in a town, in a city near you over the coming weeks called An Evening with Wealth for Life. Go on to our website or call us on 1-300-793-877 and make a time to book in and come to one of these events. What are some of the things that can actually go wrong with your investments, okay? So I'm gonna cover a a, a couple of these, right? Number one, buying the wrong type of property, okay? So, you know, we see a lot of clients that come to us for the first time that have got property portfolios that are not performing, okay? So we restructure um, a lot of property portfolios because people have bought real estate that does not further their goal, doesn't bring them closer to their goal or what what it is they're trying to achieve. And what do I mean by that? So we all have people that'll go in and buy things like service apartments or one bedroom units or one bedroom apartments, you know, property in low demand areas. One, because they're cheap and affordable or one, because it's it's close to where they live or, um, you know, they were made, they were given that recommendation from a, from a friend or a family member. And they come in and say, hey, we've got property here, we've got property in Queensland, we've got property over here, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. 
And when we sit down with them and understand what it is they're trying to achieve, when we look at their portfolio, we see that it's actually taking them further away from their goal and not closer to it, okay? So you've got to make sure you're buying the right property that helps you, with, that takes you to where you want to get to, okay? Very important. And people still make the mistake today thinking that all property is good property. No, it's not, okay? You need to understand the difference between great real estate and average poor real estate, okay? Um, because if you think that every property is uh, is great is good property, you, you're sadly mistaken. Yeah, sure. You buy a property anywhere in Australia, you hold on to it for long enough, it'll increase in value. But you know what? You don't have long enough. Okay. Most of us are on this earth, and if we look at the time we get into the property market, let's say twenty, at the age of twenty, and we go to the age of say sixty, forty years. Okay. What have you got there in 40 years? Probably five, maybe six property cycles, right? You wanna get it right, and the, the worse off you are with the properties you purchase, the longer it's gonna take for you to achieve your goal, okay? And who the hell really wants to wait till they're 65 to start to enjoy the, the fruits of you know, a real estate or any investment portfolio, okay? So make sure you're buying the right type of property, and when you don't buy the right property, get rid of it, okay? Get rid of the property. Move it on. We had one client who came and saw us, had about four properties when he walked into it through our doors. Three of them we got rid of, okay? Today he's sitting on a $15 million property portfolio, okay? Uh, doing extremely well and he's five years away from freedom, okay? So when, you're buying the, when you buy the wrong property and it's not performing, have the guts, have the confront to be able to look at it and say, you know what, I made a mistake here, I'm moving on, I'm getting rid of this property, um, you know, freeing up some some uh, some cash, some some reducing some debt, freeing up some equity, and moving on and getting the right property. Okay, choosing the wrong tenants. Okay, if you're a property investor, believe me, <laughs> you would have had this headache uh, probably many many times. Okay, when it comes to uh, tenants, again, don't let that derail you or distract you. Okay, uh, if you've got the wrong tenants, the first thing I always say to people is Talk to your property manager, okay? The reality is that you probably got the wrong property manager, okay? Great property managers attract great tenants. Bad property managers attract bad tenants. It's that simple. Over my 20 years of experience, I've known it to be the case all the time. Every time I've bought on a great property manager, I have no headaches. Rent's paid in full, on time, all the time. My property is looked after like I'd be living in it. Uh, my rent gets increased every 12 months. It's beautiful, smooth sailing, okay? When you bring the wrong property, property manager on board, right? They start giving you excuses. Rent is late. Um, damage gets done to the property. You've got to fork out money. You know, you're having to get involved more and more and more and more. And, I see, and you sit there and you think, wow, wait a minute, property manager. You're supposed to manage my property. That's why you're a property manager. They do anything but manage your property, okay? So when you have the wrong tenants, look at the property manager first. And in most cases, get rid of the property manager, okay? Get rid of the property manager soon after the tenants will leave as well, okay? So um, get the right property manager, they'll put the right tenants in place, and that's how you handle the tenants yeah, when that goes wrong. The importance of having a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our advisors. Number one, you want to know how to pay off the mortgage on your home in the fastest possible way. How about understanding and learning how you can become debt-free forever? Imagine paying less tax and having more money going to your pay packet every fortnight. What about securing your financial future and your retirement so you never have to worry and stress about money ever again. These are the things that we go through with you in a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Some of the results that we've achieved for our clients by sitting down with us one-on-one, -on -one, we had one couple who created $300,000 in 14 months. We had another gentleman who's gone on to amass a fortune in real estate that's going to pay him $200,000 per annum for the rest of his life when he stops working. These are just some of the things that come out by sitting down with our advisors in a one-on-one -on -one consultation. 
get your goal planning and you get your set your, your financial planning and your goal setting right in 2019. Take advantage of the tremendous opportunities that exist in the Australian property market right now. Call 1300 79 3877 or visit wealthforlife.com.au and book an appointment in with one of our investment advisors to get your money right in 2019. Not having enough um, cash flow, <clears throat> a common problem with investors. Um, that's why finance and financing is just so important from the get-go, all right? Smart investors will set themselves up with plenty of buffers, okay? And by buffers, I mean, um, you know, lines of credit, redraw facilities, uh, offset uh, accounts to um, handle any shortfalls or any, um, any costs along the way until they get a refund or uh, until the, the property increases in, um, in value and in rent, okay? So make sure you've got some savings set aside or some buffers set aside as part of your, your finance strategy to, to handle um, you know, any cash flow issues along the way, okay? And again, we're really good at doing this with our clients, okay? We pride ourselves on making sure that people that invest um, with us or, or work with us that we don't impact their lifestyle financially along the way, okay? Because you don't really need to you know, sacrifice too much to build a property portfolio, okay? So get the finance set up properly. <clears throat> Capital growth. Um, again, um, it's usually a case of buying the wrong type of property, okay? Because the two factors that you need with any real estate investment portfolio is really strong capital growth and really good cash flow, okay? <clears throat> the right properties or a combination of the right properties will give you both, okay? And when you don't have that, just discard those properties, okay? Put your ego to the side, realize you've made a mistake, get rid of the property, cut your losses, and get into some great real estate, okay? The thing is, if you do that early enough, you'll be able to catch up anyway, okay? It's our ego and the need to be right about our decisions that keep us broke, all right? Or keep us with a portfolio that's not performing the way it should, all right? Interest rates, because these are all part of the things that can go wrong with your investment properties, right? Interest rates, so what happens when your interest rates go up, okay? Well, again, if you're a property investor, you know that interest rates fluctuate, okay? Again, have some reserves, have some buffers put in place to handle an increase in interest rates. But the great thing with interest rates is this. When interest rates go up, normally rents go up as well, okay? So, um, you know, it, it stops people from getting into the property market, from buying. And what happens as a result, people resort to renting. So then you have a greater demand for rent, right? So then you can actually push your rents up. Okay, so it's not the end of the world when interest rates go up because usually your rents will increase as a result of that. But if you don't like interest rates going up, uh, and nobody does, right? Um, actually, that's not true. A few people actually use that to their advantage. But um, lock in your interest rates and go from you go from uh, variable interest rates to fixed interest rates. That's one way to handle that problem. All right. Job loss. Okay. <clears throat> if you if you're gonna lose if you're gonna lose your job, <laughs> nobody's gonna lose their job. If you lose your job, okay, or things don't go as planned with regards to your, to your career or your workplace environment, again, have plenty of buffers in place to see you and t through until you get your next job. Because the reality is this, right? When people lose their job, there are very few of us that are sitting, say, on $150,000 a year, right? Lose our jobs and sit on the couch and watch TV and do nothing, okay? Usually when you're on that kind of money, you've got commitments. So not many of us are gonna sit around and do nothing. The reality is if we lose our jobs, we're probably employed again within 30 to 60 days anyway. So the loss is actually very, very, very minimal. Plus there's some insurances you can take out as a result of losing your job anyway, okay? So there's always ways that you can actually handle uh, any problem that comes along. And the most important thing is that you have that mindset, okay? Uh, rent loss, um, again, you can take out things like landlords, protection insurance, okay? Some amazing policies out there that cover you for loss of rent once a tenant's in there, malicious damage where tenant won't pay, can't pay, does a runner, all that kind of stuff, right? So you can protect yourself with things like rental guarantees and so forth, okay? So if you lose your rent, um, if you lose rent, 
those things can kick in, but again, have some buffers put in place, okay? Um, <clears throat> property management, we spoke about that, right? Probably one of the biggest headaches if you've got a big portfolio is property management, okay? So very, very, very important that you've got a really good property manager in place because they will make life very easy for you, okay? The importance of having a good mortgage broker, okay? If you've got a really good mortgage broker, you're not gonna have a lot of issues with finance, okay? Because a great mortgage broker will actually put a strategy in place, not just for your first purchase, but for your next five, 10 years, okay? So um, put good people around you, accountants, lawyers, solicitors to protect your assets, accountants to structure your taxes, making sure you're getting the right return back on your investments. <clears throat> solicitors to protect your assets and making sure that um, you know nobody can attack your, your portfolio and your, and your assets and then you can pass on your wealth to the next generation and so forth, okay? These are all about having great relationships in place with the right people, okay? <clears throat> you see, the problem is this. When a lot of people have, a, have problems with their property portfolio, their, their property investments, when I investigate that, it's usually because they're trying to do it all on their own. Okay, so I'll say that again. <clears throat> a lot of people have issue, ha, run into problems with their portfolio, with their investment properties, when they're trying to do everything on their own. If you're working nine to five, you've got a full-time job, and you've got kids and a wife and husband and you know social life and things to you know you've got your responsibilities as you know as a husband and as a father as a wife as a, you know as a mother it doesn't leave a lot of time right to manage a growing hopefully growing investment portfolio okay so you need to have people around you you need to have the right people around you that have your back okay because if you're trying to do everything on your own eventually you're going to run into some heartache okay uh, especially when your portfolio starts to grow, all right? So um, <clears throat> the most important thing that though um, that you really need to get an understanding of is your level of responsibility when it comes to your investment portfolio, okay? Have a look at the decisions that you make. Have a look at your relationship with money. Have a look at um, how, you know, how you handle your cash flow. Have a look at how you communicate, have a look at how you communicate with the people that are helping you. How do you communicate with your mortgage broker? How do you communicate with your builder? How do you communicate with your property manager, your accountant? Okay, do you just give everything to them verbally? Do you put things in writing? Do you follow up, right? <clears throat> do you keep accountability? Do you run control on the people around you to get that predictable outcome? Do you continue to follow up? Um, you know, when we investigate why people's portfolios have gone in the wrong direction, let's say, <clears throat> it's usually the case, one, they're trying to do everything on their own, two, they're actually very bad communicators, okay? They're very bad at communication, and uh, they don't really know how to manage or build relationships, okay? There's, um, you know, you as an investor out there, done correctly, you should be able to get people around you to do what you want them to do. If you've got the right relationship, if you look after them, uh, it's not that difficult, okay? So um, make sure you're getting advice too from the right people, okay? Um, if you start taking advice from the wrong people, you're not gonna get anywhere near where you need to get to in terms of achieving your goals. So again, have a look at the, the, the people that you talk to and the advice you, you get from them and see how they're doing in life. Because you will usually inherit the problems from the people that you get advice from, okay? You take advice from people that are always <clears throat> um, struggling in life, don't expect to do well if you take their advice, right? Common sense. If you're taking advice from people that are doing well, that are growing in life, whose portfolios are growing, that are good money managers, that know how to communicate, build great relationships, um, <clears throat> know how to create and expand a business and a portfolio, chances are, same thing is gonna happen for you as well, okay? Um, and have a look at your intention behind everything, okay? You know, I, um, I always look at people's intention and what they're really wanting to get out of their, uh, their investment strategy. Because the reality is some of us actually sabotage our own portfolios, okay? Just by the fact that we take very little responsibility for our, for our decisions, 
for, uh, for our money. We see a little bit of money, a little bit of equity. We go spend it in the wrong way um, and then get ourselves into trouble, okay? So have a look at your intention and how you feel around a lot of money, okay? Can, do you feel comfortable handling a lot of money or does it make you feel uncomfortable, right? Because if it makes you feel uncomfortable, I promise you, you will create situations where you push that money away <clears throat> just so you can go back to where you once were before you started your investment strategy. <clears throat> okay, everyone's got like a, um, how do we call it? It's almost like a thermostat of how much money we're capable of holding, right? It's like, actually, you take, take a glass like this, right? If all your life you've had that much, if the, if the water is money and your, your bank account says the glass, <clears throat> and all you've ever had in life is that much money, right? Unless, you, unless you're changing some of the things that you're doing right, in life, some of the decisions you make or your relationship towards money, no matter how much money you attract, you'll find ways to lose it So just so you've got that much money again, okay? So that's the relationship that a lot of people have with money, okay? Um, I'm going to talk about this in more over um, some podcasts we've got coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, and how a lot of us actually sabotage our financial well-being, okay? Really interesting stuff. You should really have a listen to that, right? But um, <clears throat> I'll go back to what I started off with. Make sure you're very, very, very clear on your goals and what it is you want to achieve. I had an example recently where one of our clients, against our advice, went and sold one of her properties, a really, really well-performing property, right? Right? purely because she was having a problem with her chosen property manager, okay? She was having dramas with tenants, uh, rent uh, not being paid because she wanted to give the property management of her uh, property to a friend, okay? Ran into a, a, so much drama with tenants and cash flow and rent and some damage. She ended up getting rid of a very, very well-performing property in one of the northern suburbs of Melbourne, okay, doing extremely well. Talking about cutting off your nose to spite your face, right? So, now there was somebody who really didn't have the right mindset for, uh, for, for creating wealth because the minute they ran into a spot of bother, right, they quit, okay? So, put the right people around you, take the advice that we've covered on, on, on this uh, on this on this stream on this video and make sure your goal your, your goal that you're wanting to achieve because the thing is your goal is the end destination right <clears throat> and the plan that we put in that you put in place along the way may need to vary based on circumstances right may need to vary but the goal never changes <clears throat> okay the plan may vary and may change along the way how we get there may change but the destination we're going to never changes okay so Make sure that's big enough to counter any obstacles, any barriers that come your way, um, or else you're gonna you're gonna want to quit well before you should. Okay, so thank you for listening in. Hopefully you got something out of this episode. Um, <clears throat> it's one of my it's been one of my favourites actually because we we see this when when clients come and see us for the first time, especially if they've been investors before they see us. We start to see a lot of this, and one of the things we we, we teach our clients to do is to really Make sure that you hold that goal, that purpose, that thing you want to achieve really high up and it means something to you because it will just crush any barriers and obstacles along the way and you know, you'll make sure that you'll actually get to the end. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening in. Again, um, we'd love to hear from you. We love your feedback. Please share this video. Uh, it means a lot to us. We want to get our message out. What we do actually works. We want to get it out to as many people as possible. Come in and have a chat to us uh, here at Wealth for Life uh, in sunny, sunny South Melbourne. Um, we're on one 793 or at wealthforlife.com.au. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Love to get your feedback. Love your questions. And uh, until next Tuesday, happy investing.